feel nauseous, believe me. Never had a lot of sh come easy. Had to work hard, struggle just to be me. Had to be. What was left over I put towards my dreaming But the only thing in life that has meaning Are the things you gotta work for, believe me Take into your hands a plan Your own hands can land your own brand And damn, I feel like no one takes accountability They want the credibility Convincingly unwilling to put in the f hours It takes to get some power Don't be f***ing sour Take a cold shower Scream until you're louder Work until you're prouder And f*** all the doubters They're just your downers I swear to God they all let me down I always fought I can tell you that Seven years after Freddie Gray that was 2015, spring, April, May. This is 2022. Communities like Sandtown, all we saw then and now in terms of investment was a renovated Western District Police Station and a new funeral home. That's what West Baltimore got. A new police station and a new funeral home. What kind of optics are they? Was, was Freddie Gray any different than 1968 Baltimore riots? Dr. King's passing, killing, murder? Was it the same? Uh, no, it wasn't. I mean, I, I think, well, first of all, uh, people who are, are being uh, violent and burning, it, 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 that's, you know, it, all that's the same. Uh, but the point is, is what was the cause? And what were they attempting to register? I always fought just to wear the crown. I'm off at these fucking clowns. I love you. They deserve it now. It's got next. And I'll be up. It's only worth it if you work for it. I won't stop till they hear me now. I won't stop till I wear the crown. Good morning. First name's Donnie, last name's Glover, in it to win it for the long haul baby. If you regularly tune into this show, you know that I am a big lover of history, particularly black history. And to help us discuss some of Baltimore's black history, we have with us the one and only Philip J. Merrill of Nanny Jack and Company. Now, who is this guy, Philip? Well, I'm going to tell you. If you go to his website, nannyjack.com, the first thing you'll see is a quote by historian John Hope Franklin. We learned about him down at Morehouse. The quote goes like this. We must go beyond textbooks, go out into the bypaths and untrodden depths of the wilderness and travel and explore and tell the world the glories of our journey. Without further ado, let's bring him up. The man, the myth. <laughs> Soon to be a legend. <laughs> Philip J. Merrill. Good morning, Philip. How are you? Good morning, DMG. Thank you very much for that uh, warm welcome. Pleasure to be here. Always a pleasure. Who is that black lady behind you? Look like Ann's your mama. Which one? <laughs> are you talking about the plastic one or the or the? Or, you talking about this one or that one? Which one? The red one. The okay. One to your to your left, over your left shoulder. Um. This is the top of a very um, stereotypical uh, plastic jar that goes to a larger set cookie jar, and the other part is in another room. I just had that up, uh, but it's very painful, very, very painful. Why is it painful? Because during the, the Jim Crow era, white stream America portrayed us in negative lights as being subservient. Uh, they uh, fat, uh, roguish, uh, super dark, uh, uh, lazy, and 
this is a part of a major mass produced marketing campaign that was successful for decades. Now, would that have any correlation to the alligator bait? Yeah, that's all in that same um, that same realm uh, in the South, in Florida, and other, uh, obviously, uh, right in uh, some of the areas where uh, Ian just uh, created quite a bit of devastation. Um, alligators were prominent, and so in the early parts of the 1900s, you saw uh, photographs, uh, uh, stereotypical toys, and other things where alligators had in their mouths little black babies. And that is known as alligator bait. Correct. And and, and I'm not putting a plug in for this, but um, several years ago, I wrote a foreword and a blurb on the back of a book from the Jim Crow Museum at Ferris State University. Uh, and uh, the book is dealing with nothing but racist, stereotypical uh, memorabilia that permeates the world back then. And unfortunately, a lot of this content is still being sold today at flea markets, estate sales, auctions, uh, both online and in person, and uh, even being reproduced. Uh, and my biggest problem is with the reproduced component of it. Uh, I have no problem with the historical pieces because they were made at a different time period. Uh, but in 2020, 2022, and so forth, if this content is being made in China and shipped to America and being sold, I, I do have a problem with it. You may be pleased to know that when the movie Django came out, now I have never seen the movie. I have no interest in seeing it, particularly after hearing Quentin Tarantino's comment that this was the best slavery movie or something to that effect. Uh, I, I couldn't stomach any more of it. It was, I was not looking at it for entertainment's sake because I don't find anything entertaining about slavery. But where I'm going with all of this, Philip, is as that movie was popular, what's all that damn noise, man? Sit still. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm in, I'm in, an, anti, I'm, I'm in an antique chair. I'm in an antique chair that's over 150 years old. It makes noise. Okay, it's called WD 40. But look, <laughs> I see the show that's already started. But listen, <laughs> they were. See, don't don't make don't let me lose my train of thought. Django the movie, Prince Tarantino. He slavery. came out with dolls. Yes. And I wrote a letter to him. I said, "Take that S H I T off the shelves. How dare you make dolls of slaves?" Ain't nothing funny about that. Ain't nothing popular about it. No, nobody want no damn slave dolls. Your thoughts? Okay. I agree. But it's all just a part of a marketing rollout campaign. Told them to roll it back in because we ain't no, had it. I, I feel you on that. But recently, I just acquired um, the new hot selling Madam C.J. Walker doll. I'd be more interested personally in an Annie Turnbull Malone doll. Well, I would be too, but we ain't there yet. But you know, we do have rare diplomas from the Poro Beauty College. So don't go there, okay? Because we can go there. But I'm, I'm, I'm letting you run your show today. Um, I am well, not going to let me run my show. I mean, I only have all of the buttons. Okay. Right. Well, I'm what, calling you. What huh? is it you want us to know about Madam C.J. Walker? Well, first of all. Um, my good friend is her great granddaughter, Lelia Walker, who uh, is an outstanding journalist uh, and is put out a seminal book on Madam C.J. Walker and is in the throes of soon to be releasing a groundbreaking book on Lelia Walker, who um, ended up coming to Old West Baltimore and having dinner in certain houses that you go by every day and wouldn't know about. This lady was one of many. When I say Madam C.J. Walker was one of many, fortunately right now she's getting the biggest bounce, okay? But you can't overlook Madam Sarah Spencer Washington of Apex. You can't overlook Coral Beauty College with, with Annie Turnbull Malone. You can't overlook Anthony Overton. There was a man. You can't overlook William Besso of Besso Hair Products out of Memphis. Um, the list just goes on and on where these black entrepreneurs created a multi-level marketing concept almost where you could go uh, and get trained 
get certified, have access to their product, and um, you know, create your own wealth. Now you uh, and I literally have no hair in the game. No, no, not true, not true, bro, not true, not true. I oh, shaved yeah. early this morning. I shaved early this morning for your show. Okay, I shaved. I left this on and I took this off for your show. <laughs> oh, okay, well, you still have hair. I, I just want to get to this part. Okay. We as a community, and thank you for joining us. Our numbers are through the roof this morning. You bring your own crowd with you. I do. But, oh. <laughs> yeah. As as we talk about hair and beauty, yes. I'm often troubled. What are you doing? You don't worry about what I do. I don't worry about what you do. <laughs> well, I'm making all of these distracting. Yeah, I couldn't go on no road trip with you because you just wouldn't sit still. No, Philip, um, <laughs> when we think about the beauty industry and how much money that we as a people have, what, what do they say? $1.6 trillion in annual disposable income. And I think it was our mutual godmother, Diane Bell that was quoting you talking about the billions in black tourism that we don't seem to get any of. But that's gonna I, change. That's gonna change. We just I just I'm just looking at the money that black women alone spend. Now these these wigs and weaves come out of three countries that are the top producers to my understanding: China, India. And, and Great Britain. I'm just floored that the people you named, Madam C.J. Walker, Annie Turnbull Malone, who are the other two? S Madam Sarah Spencer Washington, New Jersey. And Apex, then a, Apex and Beauty. You, and you mentioned a man. I gotta uh, get Anthony, through that. Anthony Overton. And I look at the money that we spend how that money is leaving our community. Correct. And not just black women in America. I mean, black women in Africa. When I see sisters in Africa, not just wearing the hair, but they throwing in the bleaching, the Correct. skin bleaching. I'm just wondering what in the world has happened. Why is being black why are these people changing their skin complexion? We don't love ourselves, Donnie. I'll be damned I'm going to change this beautiful brown skin. To and what? You know I'm not going to change this fine brown frame, right? <laughs> so, But but hear, hear me out. One of my and then to be doing all like this. That's, that's not an Afrocentric move. That's more of a... Right, but, 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 but hear me out for a minute. You can't do black hair like that, can you? No, you can't. You, you, you can't. But, 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 but feel me on this. When we have not been taught to value our identity, our sense of place, our mores, values, traditions, we then have been need validation from people that don't look like us. Well, time out, because I got a I, I love ping pong and I got a left slam for you. Okay, come on, bring it. So we're talking about, uh, I mentioned the sisters. Yeah. The wigs, the weaves, India, England, China. Right, they make right, money right. off something that black people started. Well, let's be honest. Other people want to look like us. More people want to look like us than we want to look like us. Now, now, you know, I need to call my therapist. Everybody you, gets it. Everybody gets it but us, Donnie. Everybody gets it but us. I, I'm confused, Philip. Why are you confused? I just broke it down for you. Could you say they, it again? They want our food. They want our music. They, they want our ability to do any and everything. And we are the least willing to accept, be proud of, promote, distribute, and own that cultural legacy. So, so work with me for a minute, okay? Baltimore had 
localized black beauty colleges that gave out their own certificates. Okay. So what I'm talking about is, yes, they had access to Pearl Beauty College. Yes, Apex Beauty School with Mar Madam Sarah Spencer Washington. And yes, um, obviously, um, Madam C.J. Walker. But there were local folks that had their own beauty schools. See, this is a huge industry that we no longer control. Just, just like domestic, hear me out. And I know this, and I was prepared for something else, according to some off off conversation that we had, but we might get there. I hope so. But anyway, check this out. Look at industries. We no longer control washing clothes. We don't control housekeeping. So many things that we were controlling, we don't. We don't think that it's worthy, it's good enough, is this, is that. Oh, it's too good to work in hotels and restaurants now. Let me tell you, I got my start working in hotels and restaurants. Okay, and I'm I'm getting ready to hit you. You know what? I came prepared for you today, Donnie Glover, Don, Donnie, Donald Morton Glover. You know why I came prepared for you today? Because I was not going to allow Pepper Pig to get the best of me this morning. Pepper Pig got me up at 440 this morning. Okay? What is that tied into this? My daughter was up and needed to see Pepper Pig. So I've been rocking and rolling, anxious to get with you because I was up dealing with Pepper Pig. Okay. So I am fired up and came prepared. I'm gonna hit you with something that I hope your audience you already can... hit us with Madam Sarah Spencer Washington. I've never heard of her. Well, and you and, need and to I'm not ashamed to say that. I've never okay, heard of her. That's good. And she also was a journalist. So as a journalist, you should know her name. Okay. Multimillionaire. I'm I'm, I'm embarrassed. Okay, I did a podcast with her descendant. And if you go to Artifactual Journey podcast, you can hear me talking to an actual descendant of Madam Sarah Spencer Washington, who did a short documentary on his relative. Anyway, check this out. I'm going to read you a brief blurb from an original 1892 letter from, thir from um, Frederick Douglass. Okay, now, Frederick Douglass came to Baltimore on numerous occasions, and obviously we're not going to talk about when he escapes and blah, 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 because that, that takes us off of what I'm trying to hit you with. In 1889, he was the graduation speaker at the Old Colored High School. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. What year? 1889. And, yeah, in the 1880s. But, but, he, but don't, don't, don't take me off course, okay? Because this is tied into your Black Wall Street. This is tied into us owning and, and being fiscally responsible, okay? So check this out. In this December the 9th, 1892 letter that he was replying to another formerly enslaved person. So to set the table, you have two formerly enslaved people communicating with each other, okay? That alone is powerful. You feel me? And you mean through written? Yes, with with, with magnificent penmanship um, that, uh, and at one point, I loaned this to the Smithsonian. This original, this is a copy, but I loaned the original to the Smithsonian, but I do have it back in our archives today, okay? I just want to read you something. I dropped it, by the way. I dropped it, so forgive me. This is a copy. He's really replying to this formerly enslaved person dealing with the precursor to Plessy v. Ferguson and the anti-separate coach railroad issue. And this is the part that I, forget my daughter, this is the part I really want you to hear, okay? Are you ready? In the time of slavery, it was impossible to make the white people of the South happy without the present presence of the Negro. He was in their parlors, their dining rooms, their chambers, their kitchens, and their carriages, and their white babes nursed at the breast of Negro mothers. Now that the Negro is free, effort pure and simple is made to degrade him. Now. You know what else he says? And this is what I, if, if, if we leave your audience with nothing today, I want them to understand something that Douglas is talking about. I'm getting ready to drop it on you right now, okay? And I don't know what happened to my notes. Well, if you're just joining us, we're talking with Philip J. Merrill. He is a noted historian. What I love about Philip is that he's relatively young. And quite often, when you think of historians, you think of you know, old guys with gray beards, but <laughs> okay, okay. So, so, so the young man. Matter of fact, he's got a young daughter around there. 
I also have a 16 year old daughter, by the way. So I had, uh, uh, I'm, I'm doubly blessed, but let me hit you this, with this other part. A more powerful influence can be extracted by the practice of self-denial on our part and by doing as little traveling as possible and by keeping our money in our pockets. Okay, I need, you to, I need you to repeat that. No, I'm, I'm a little slow. That's how I learned. Say it again. Okay. But perhaps a more powerful influence can be ex exacted by the practice of self-denial on our part and by doing as little traveling as possible and by keeping our money in our pockets, staying at home and practicing industry, personal neatness and the acquirement of property and education and building up our manly character. Okay, it sounds like saying, go home, stay out the fray. He's saying- Save, save your money, work, work internally, don't try to be a part of that. If the white man and the railroad won't accept us, don't be a part of that game. Save your money, get education, do things that you can. So in other words, he's preaching some type of uh, recycling the dollar, kind of handling your own business, being accountable and working with your own folks in 1892. And in 2022, we still haven't gotten there. We still give money to organizations that mistreat us, that misrepresent us. We still support entertainers and, and businesses that don't have our best interests. Like who? I don't want to. I don't want to get off point, but but look at Yee or Yeezy or Kanye West. Okay, is that the black man entertainer who wore the White <laughs> Lives Matter Co T-shirt? Co correct. And, and, and is, also, is this the black man entertainer also the wealthiest black man in America who showed up? Not only did he have on the White Lives Matter T-shirt. But there was a black woman, I believe Correct. she's a conservative, and she showed up with a White Lives Matter t-shirt also. Was that a smack in the face of the ancestors? Uh, it, it was a young Jack Johnson knockout punch. Yes, indeed. And, and, and also, he has a huge contract with Adidas. How many, how many folks that look like you and I are still going to go out and buy Adidas? I'm, 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 I'm a little... Okay, so... You're saying he's lost his cotton picking mind? Uh, I don't know if he ever had it, to be honest. But yes. He's very talented. He's a very creative genius. A creative, a creative, a creative genius. genius. Yes. But, yes. But politically, when he got out there and ran for president, you know, we saw it as a ploy, as something fun, you know, maybe just throwing no. throwing darts. He's you lost. Know, he, he, he's lost. Remember, early in his career, he had a a, a serious accident that allowed a, a metal plate to go into part of his uh, head or face. So he was fortunate to be alive from a serious accident. All due respect, he is a brilliant mind from a music creative perspective. As far as being racially conscious, connected, and in tune with his heritage, it ain't happening. But I, I, I want to leave that because I got something for you that I really think, besides the Douglas piece, that I think you Thank will appreciate. Thank you for sharing that with us, Philip. Okay, Thank no. you for all of the history that you share. And on behalf of the people watching, we appreciate your love for our history. And we appreciate not just you, but your team. So that would include <laughs> your mom, your wife, or your wife, your mom, your daughter. And, and other people that we bring onto the table for different contracted projects. And um, big ups also to Diane Bell McCoy. Shout for out never, to us. For never letting me forget you. Okay. <laughs> the check's in the mail to you and to Diane. Um, I'm holding up a book right here that is really important to all of the mission of, of who you are and what you do. This is The Negro in Business, published by Booker T. Washington, who is the founder of the Negro Business League. Okay. Now, everyone should go online and get and, and read the digital version. Uh, and, and this is really an, a staple uh, of, a, of a rare book that should be in your personal library, okay? And I'm bringing this up because so often we do not know about a sense of place. We don't understand the sense of our community. We get lost in the present day uh, dormant buildings, false uh, 
facades that have been put on the exterior. Uh, uh, we look at a vacant lot and, and, and never understand what type of building or house or school used to be there. But Booker T was a good friend of Baltimore's, um, a good friend of the Afro, frequently came to town. And one of the early members of his uh, business league uh, was none other than Harry T. Pratt. Harry T. Pratt was... Now that's a white man. No, who? Harry T. Pratt? Well, no. Who? He's not the one that Pratt Street is named after? No. Ha ha Harry, Harry Truman Pratt is a black educator who happens to be the first person of African descent to matriculate at the Maryland Institute College of Art. Harry Pratt went to MICA. Yeah. But more importantly, more importantly, he is a educator at School 103 at Division on Division Street, the Henry Holland Garnett School, and a longtime principal of Douglas High School. So, you know, Al Halfway just got money for that building. Bro, I, I know that and then some. We have the baddest 103 archive known to man. Not bragging, just back. We got homework assignments, report cards, textbooks, photographs, and the original bronze tablet that was put on the building in 1919 when Henry Holland Garnett's uh, descendant was at the ceremony that was held at Bethel AME Church on Druid Hill Avenue. You know, when you come through Druid Hill Avenue today, and I just, I come through there often, I, I have to just pause. I was coming through there on a bike and I just had to pause right there at McMeckin and Druid Hill. Right, right. I had to pause because there's there's a church. What's the church one block over from Druid Hill? Are you talking about Trinity? Trinity Baptist right, Church? Right there on the corner where Clarence Mitchell III was laid to rest. Right, right opposite McCullough Homes. Oh, you, oh no! You you talk you talking about Sharp Street? I don't know what you're talking Street about. Church, Sharp right Street. there okay. on that corner. Let me tell you, I just stood there on that corner. You could feel the ancestors all around you. I was thinking about, you know, the Dobsons, Union Baptists, right. But before you get to the Dobson civil rights history in that area, I mean, right there, right there, that was the, okay, 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 okay. You know, I went over the Hose Heights. Okay, and, and I, came, I came, I came with you for Hose Heights. But well, you I, know what? I, I, I'll fall back. I, 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 there's so many thoughts that came to mind. I felt the ancestors on that corner, though, Philip. Okay, and 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 thank you for saying that because on every block in the 175 block radius that's designated as Old West Baltimore, you should feel the ancestors. You should feel the formerly enslaved that ended up walking and living and working in the community there. You should feel the former USCT, the colored, the Civil War soldiers. You should feel a, a, almost any aspect of black history was up in that area. You should feel I can't hear you. Uh-oh. What happened? Relax. I saw the picture of the black man, his his wife, his child. He had on a Civil War uniform. I know you've seen the picture, and they say that's a picture of Baltimore. It's a Civil War soldier in Baltimore, and the, the material, the reading material that was around it spoke about Baltimore being having the largest population of free blacks prior to the Civil War. Do you know any Baltimore Civil War history, Black history? How, how can I not, Donnie, Donnie, Donald Morton Glover? So so let me let me hit you with something. At that Sharp Street Church that you were talking about where you were feeling the spirit of the ancestors, one of the church members in a rare photograph that we have a piece of, hear me out, it's a remnant. We don't have the whole photograph. I could not get anyone at that church to allow a church member to take a picture of the whole photograph so I could see what other people were in the picture and research it. And I'll make sure that we put up on our site and send to you the remnant of this picture. This one man 
was a former Civil War soldier from Prince George's County, Maryland. And when he mustered out in the South, he walked. Let me say that again. He walked from North Carolina to Baltimore. And he became an active member of Sharp Street Church. Wasn't no Wawa, 7-Eleven, no coffee, and none of that on the road. He had to walk. Not, not exactly. Not only that, but see, at one point I was looking at a long walk. That's a long ride. That's exactly. But hear me out. At one point I was looking into trying to create a former Civil War soldier tour of Baltimore. I would because because no, I, I I stopped it. But the point that I'm making is this: there are remnants of where some of them ended up obviously post uh, Civil War, post Bellum into the 20th century, because some of them were able to live, you know, up until the 19 teens and 20s. And as, as a matter of fact, at the corner of um, uh, uh, Druid Hill and um, oh, right there by Union Baptist, uh, there uh, was, yes. uh, no, um, what's the site? Right right there, Dolphin, yeah. Dolphin. Um, Dolphin. There, there was a, uh, a freedman, a freedman's bank uh, facility where you could go to try to claim some of your leftover money from back in the day, from antebellum period. So you know, right now, and I would give a lot of credit not just to the president but to Kamala Harris. I would imagine she has something to do with it. But the White House just put out some information about the freedman's bank, and they have some, they have uh, some money for black businesses long story short sure sure well and see so again and the freedman's bank you know what i cut you but frederick <laughs> douglas, <laughs> I frederick know. douglas yes, 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 this yes. came to me last night he was the second president yes yes of this black ship caulkers union started by isaac myers and he was the second president of the freedman's bank okay so Maybe I'm, it wasn't the second, but they did the same thing to him that they did to Barack Obama and and Wes Moore. Well, I can't say that. No, you, you they, they brought the black man in to clean up the mess. Right. Don't 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 go there. But 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 go here. Baltimore is sacred ground for entrepreneurism, for free black, for enslavement, for for maritime for sports, for religion, for music, any aspect of the historical narrative you want to study, you do a disservice if you don't do proper scholarship on Baltimore. Better than New York? I don't I don't compare because every place is okay, different. Okay, okay, okay. And 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 hear me out. Not only is every place different, Every place has a geographical significance that is different. And every place has a different type of political machine or movement. And some of those political machines are more invested and, and not willing to be tied into disenfranchisement to the degree that some other localities are. So Baltimore ain't got no problem with slavery. New York, they ended slavery in 1804. I don't, I don't want to say that Baltimore doesn't have any problem with slavery, but what I was really trying to say, and I'm going to just say it, is that it's high time, it's been time, that we recognize our historical significance. We can't just look at the Royal Theater. We can't not oh. just look at Billie Holiday. We can't just talk about the AACP from looking at Lily Carroll Jackson or Juanita Jackson or Clarence Mitchell. You have Harvey Johnson um, with the Mutual Brotherhood of Liberty in the 1800s that set the table for the um, Niagara movement. You have so many other activities of I, civil I, I, I can't let you skate past Harvey like that. Why, why not? We need a little more. Okay, okay, okay. So, so but, but back up for a minute. Last week, Harvey was a man's man, is my understanding. He was, he was kind of like Daniel Boone in the church, you know. He okay, was, so he not, was not, all dog, you know, because a lot of times you think <laughs> you got a dog, Philip, and you got a cat. Some of these cats they they pretend like they dogs, but they, you know, 
Right. But okay, but so check this out. Yeah, the late night they got on mini skirts and hey, wear your mini skirt. But we just thought you was all dog. That's all. We are fortunate to have a, you know what I'm saying? Get I, do, I, I get it. We have one of the rarest original photographs of Harvey Johnson. Was he a tall, dark skinned black man? Yeah, he well, I don't know how tall he was, but he was dark skinned. Mustache. Uh and, and, and nice, yeah. Uh-huh. And 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 he was formerly he was formerly enslaved. Okay, now but hear me out. Yeah, he, he, was ended, a, he was a preacher among other things, and an author and an activist. He he was certainly an activist and an author and an author. I did not know he was an author. As was his wife uh, and Amelia Amelia Etta Hall Johnson. Together they are a early version of a Barack and Michelle Obama. In the late 1800s, early 1900s, they were holding it down as a power couple. Now, hear me he out. A, there's a Harvey Johnson Tower around the corner from me named after him. Yes. And um, hear me out when I say this to you. In South Baltimore, there used to be a Harvey Johnson Junior High School. Come on with it. Did you hear what I said? Well, it's been, I've been made aware of the South Baltimore, Sharp Leaden Hall, the church, Troy Braley's daughter, yeah. Alex, Alex my good friend. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, she but hear me out. Okay. Yeah, hear, uh, hear, hear me out for a minute. Harvey Johnson is your quintessential 19th century activist that everyone should know about. You cannot get to the NAACP in Baltimore uh, and deal with the, the Carl Murphy getting Lily Carroll in 1935 to uh, move this chapter forward, okay? So from 35 to 70, Lily Carroll is running a successful NAACP where it's the second most influential chapter in the country, okay? And after her comes Anolia McMillan that no one talks about. Anolia P. McMillan. Right, and, the, and, and so, but I wanna go the back to- Granddaughter Tiffany Yes, come on, say who she is. Is uh, Congressman Brazel Gray, better known as Quasi and Fume, married her. Better known nickname is Peanut. So, anyway, how about that? How about I that? It was Pee Wee. Okay, oh, well, I'm not looking at my notes. I don't have my notes in front of me this morning. Okay? Peanut. Remember, I was dealing with Peppa Pig from 4 45 this morning. Okay, anyway, so go, go back to Harvey Johnson. I thought Harvey, it was Pee Wee, Peanut. Harvey Johnson needs even greater recognition, okay? We would not have blacks in the school system, uh, in, in uh, black teachers and black, black this and that. I mean, he was so bringing the fire in a brimstone, okay? And we don't, we don't talk about him. I mean, and his house doesn't have a marker or a designation on it on Druitt Hill Avenue. What, what, what house? I'm not going to say which house, but one of the properties oh, that he I lived in. Tell me that. <laughs> because it might be part of a project. Anyway, so, but the point I'm making is that we're so wow. busy. He lived on Druid Hill Avenue. Yeah, and 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 and, and we're, we're so busy wow. recognizing wow. other people in other parts of the country that our own home front, our own home front has been neglected. Okay, so, so hear me out. I love Harlem. I love Jackson Ward in Richmond, Virginia. I love Bill Street in Memphis. I love the Bronzeville District in Chicago. I love Black Bottom in Detroit. I love all these other historic enclaves. But at the end of the day, until you take care of home, what difference does that other stuff make? All right, pop quiz. You real smart, right? No, no, no I, I real smart. Nope. What state had the most Black towns? I don't know. Well, you, that's your project. What, what, tell me. Tell me. Texas. For real though? Texas? 500 black towns in East Texas alone. I, now see, I, I love being educated and that that's, that that's I'm speechless. Who knew? Who knew? But I, I'm glad you knew. And so the next time I come on, I want to bring some Texas artifacts and history to tie into what you just said, okay? So you, you essentially have artifacts from everywhere. No, but from across the, it, our archives was built from a national perspective. Um, I may have what, lived in- what, So yours are North American? 
Yes. Um, my my specialty, and I always have to clarify this on uh, tied into the TV shows and other work that we've done with the Antiques Roadshow on PBS and then the Chesapeake Collectibles locally on MPT um, in, in Baltimore. Um, we don't do African, Caribbean, um, you know, Western Samoan, uh, any of those other regions. Our specialty is South America. South America. Our specialty is solely once the folks landed here and then I was dealing with their journeys. So for the, for the sake of clarity, there's a 1619 project out there and I feel it's doing our people a disservice. And that is such a controversial topic that in this segment, I'm not going to touch that. In another segment, we could touch that. Okay. We were not here in 1619. We were here uh, at least dealing with the Europeans and the slave trade much earlier. And so to that, to that. 1619 taking, is late. You're taking me all over the Not place. Not accurate. And you're I don't like me all over the place. being inaccurate. You know you're taking me all over the places you love to do, right? I'm going to give you a GPS right, so right, we can I'm stay. Gonna I'm going to fall back. So I'm going to put it back on no, me. No, no, but wait a minute. Um, Later this month, I'm going to be in one of your Black Wall Street towns. Okay? I'm going to be in Durham. And maybe we could do a show while I'm in Durham. How do you like that? Okay. Now, I'm in Durham because I'm going to be on a panel discussing a Black film that the Southern Documentary Fund is behind. I'll be dealing with the filmmakers, and they're looking at a, a multiple generational approach to a historic Black community called Pahokee. And the film is called Out of the Muck. Anquan Bolden, former NFL superstar, came from there. Pernell McPhee came from there, uh, formerly of the Ravens as well. Countless folks. That was one of the worst losses we could ever endure, getting rid of Anquan Bolden. Amen. Someone should have been banged in the head. I agree. Now, hit me Somebody out. should have been thrown in the harbor. How do I, you, agree. You know, I agree. I agree. I agree. What kind I of you. stupid are we stuck on? I, I love Anquan. I still do today. I, I would love to meet him. So, But check this out. This community goes back to the Native Americans. And I mean, it's like it's been lost in a time zone. Okay, See, you had to do it. I was going to shut up. Hold okay. up. No, 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 no. But I, but I, I got to stick to my program because I get up. I work hard to make our show a certain way. And then you, Stephen A. Smith, you want to Stephen A. Smith, everybody. Um, and I'm like, you wait like a minute. You under that guy? Yeah. So can, 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 I, can I just wrap Is up? Is good or bad? Uh, it's just whatever it is, okay? <laughs> no, can I just can I just say this for a minute so I can leave Harvey Johnson and go to Hose Heights for a minute? Um, Harvey Johnson was so beloved at Union Baptist where he worked for decades. In some cases, he didn't want to take a salary. Um, and he would have a fit if anyone smoked or threw cigarette butts in front of the pavement of his church. Okay. Now, hear me out when I say this to you. We do not know our history. We, we have to find a way to get the high school and the young collegiate folks to get interested in their own family history their own community history, which is connected to the larger legacy of American history. We cannot find a way to pass the torch from down at City Hall, from down at a business, from, from an alumni perspective, from the secret benevolent societies, uh, the Masonic, the, the, the Masons. The I don't know be with these millennials, man. They have no interest in history at all. But I'm trying to tell you, we have to find a way to connect with them so more quality projects can come to fruition. Yeah, okay? this is what we do. We take them out Lincoln Park, we tie them to a tree, and we put headphones on them that plays Black History 24-7 and leave them out there about <laughs> three weeks. 
<laughs> Donnie, there are other Donnie, there are other ways, but 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 so so back up for no, a minute. No, no, no. Donnie, we Donnie. Don't have, it's 2022. We don't have time to be waiting. I'm Donnie. We, we Donnie. know all about everything except ourselves. Well, and that's why my company slogan is no. We history. need an no. intervention. We need an inter we need a, a social, we need a societal intervention. Donnie, Donnie. And we need to start at the State Board of Education. Donnie. Because how all of this black history comes out of Baltimore and, and and our teachers don't know this history, to share it with the children, it might stop some of them from becoming dirt bike riding. Donnie, children. I trained for free the first docent class at the Reginald F. Lewis Museum. Well, they're gone now, ain't they? <laughs> so, okay, Donnie, Donnie. Okay, also, hear me out. When I was an Open Society Institute fellow, I created a curriculum. Is that, that something we, to brag about? No, I, I'm just throwing it out. I'm I'm not a I'm not well, a bragging. Don't read McNair Post Baccalaureate Achievement Program Scholar. Okay, I'm, state <laughs> class of '96. Okay, <laughs> Donnie, Donnie. I'm not a braggadocious person. Okay, when I was an Open Society uh, Institute fellow, you I brag, but you smooth with it. Okay, Donnie, Donnie, I'm done. <laughs> Is it too early to drink, my family members? Um, so I created a curriculum that was a no history, no self curriculum. And by the way, this is an original Jim Crow call it segregation sign. And on the back, it's a bookmark that we give away or sell. You see my company slogan, no history, no self. OK, we don't know our history. Therefore, we don't know ourselves. So while at Booker T in the seventh grade social studies class, three days a week, we were able to immerse the students in their school history, which they did not know, their community history, which they did not know, and their family history that they did not know. Years later, we are still in touch with some of them, and they will never forget the impact that we provided at their lives at a critical time to get them anchored in their own heritage. So much. Go ahead. Philip, say hello to Andy. Andy hello. lives in Hungary. And okay. she is more interested in black history than people here. Hello. And she, hello. And she bought both of my books, including Unapologetically Black. I've oh, never yeah. met her in person, but I love me some Andy of Oz. Yes, I do. Always a positive spirit. H hello, Andy of Oz. We'll connect and follow and, and we can communicate as well. Thank you for coming on this morning. Um, the thing I want to say about the, the students at Booker T they had a disciplinary problem and the principal would only allow those classes to have the boys and the girls together when we were there. When we were not there Tuesdays and Thursdays, they were separated, okay? The principal at the time at Booker T did not want them to go on a field trip to the Anacostia Museum, part of the Smithsonian family in Northeast DC, but we worked hard and they agreed the principal in the school system to let the students go to the Smithsonian. I have the letter to the- I'm, I'm, I'm a little lost at what you just said. You said that principal didn't want the kids going to the Smithsonian? Because of their uh, behavioral issues. Oh, okay. Well, remember I set the table and by saying- thought is this might actually be what they need. So when I have to this day, the letter that the Smithsonian wrote talking about how well behaved and how they were one of the best groups of students that had ever come to them. This was largely because we reached them, we connected to them. During those classes, we brought in original artifacts from Old West Baltimore. We brought in KKK items. We, we showed them time how to up, research. Time, time, we, time you have clan paraphernalia. Well, I don't call it paraphernalia, but we have a KKK archive, yes. Letters, photographs, secret subscription magazines. We have their their Bible. Uh, what the hell you got time to do this? Where did you find the Klan stuff at? First, first of all, you DMG, right? I, I, aren't you Donnie, Donnie Morton Glover, right? But I'm, a, I'm an OG, okay? And I'm the Negro history detective man. And I got people around the country that I'm connected to that helped me find what I need for our archives. You paid a Klansman to give you his old stuff. <laughs> I didn't say why, Donnie. You found a Klansman, he was drunk. 
<laughs> and you 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 put that bat on the back up, and you took his you took his hood. What do you have? Do you have a hood? I have three hoods. I have outfits. I have. I, I listen. Back up for a minute. Okay, time up. I'm being very serious. You need to look at Birth of a Nation. I saw it. First class at, at Coppin State, 1993. D.W. Griffith, 19... 15. 1915, 1917 film that they showed to people that visited the White House how they treated black people. And it's okay. the first film that everything <laughs> you see on TV today mimics that racist-ass D.W. Griffith. Okay, now, but hear me out. Hear and me the out. people that, that supported him. Rotten he, he, bastard. He, he, you, you mean like Woodrow Wilson, President Wilson. Did you hear what I said? Wow. President Woodrow Wilson, who is connected to Baltimore, Utah Place, and Johns Hopkins University. Well, I'm not surprised. They're the same people related to the people at Roland Park. They're giving people in Hose Heights. Do you know what the issue is? Somebody put some damn plastic blockades in that little turnabout. Somebody need to go throw them damn things in the trash and just go on about their business. Okay, I I, I agree, but 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 <laughs> hear me hear me out, Donnie, Donnie, All right, please. Let me put it back on me. Okay, when we were at Booker T, we taught the students how to look at their dilapidated community with a different lens. They didn't understand the historical significance of any of the buildings that were there when we did this in 2007. They left our program with understanding more about their own family history, the significance of the school, the halls that they walked down every day, who came out of there. I even brought the uh, a 90 year old gentleman that graduated from there during the depression and we had prepared them with oral history so they could ask him questions. It's this kind of buy-in where the community, the students felt grounded and they felt a sense of self, a sense of accomplishment and a sense of can do spirit because we put it to them in a way that made sense. They had lots of questions to ask about the artifacts. They wanted to know more about their community. They wanted to know more about their family and see, so when we just want to give them tickets to a football or basketball game, when we want to give them a book bag, when we want to give them turkeys for Thanksgiving, who does that really help? Is that helping the sponsor feel good or is it really impacting the youth? And that, that, that's, that's a question to, to ponder, okay? They are walking into a historic school. And, and, and by the way, I like to keep it real. Most alum from Booker T don't even know, and I'm not saying don't even know, this is an original sterling silver school ring from Booker T. Can you see it? I don't even know how to hold this sucker up. How to, how to, how to hold this up? Like this, this way. Can you see it, Donnie? Okay, this is the original mold that made the ring. You follow me? Now, Booker T is a feeder to Douglas. 103 is a feeder to Booker T. I mean, you, you, you're you surrounded by legacies that within their own legacy hasn't properly been documented and distributed. And then when you put it all together, you're like, oh my goodness, how can you talk about America without talking about the schools, the churches, the visitors, the businesses, the, the every aspect of Baltimore. Okay, now let's, let's go a step further. I, I brought for you, Donnie. This is, and I know you know who Tucson Lovature is, so I'm not going to ask you, okay? Okay, because I know you, you, you like global history. He's my hero. I write about him in the book. And you and anybody don't know about Tucson Lovature cannot call itself a serious student of black history. Okay, so Douglas at Calhoun Carey and Baker in the 20s had a Tucson Lovature uh, literary club. And here is an original gold medallion that was awarded to a young Juanita Jackson. Okay. How you get that stuff? Don't they, don't the family supposed to have that? 
Donnie. Donnie, yeah, lawyer. We, Donnie, we run an LLC. We run, we have a leading archive of high end and low end and middle of the road end material culture. I mean, I don't want my mother's shit back. You better give me my stuff back. I ain't playing with you, Philip. Give us our stuff back. You got something from my family. I'm telling you, I ain't, I ain't, I'm coming to get it, Philip. What you got from my family history? Donnie, but first of all, this is my mom's I ain't ring. Playing with you, Philip. How you got, you better not Donnie. have my daddy's stuff there, Nate. Donnie, Donnie, I need you to be How quiet. you get all this stuff? I need you to fall back, brother. Um, your word. You got five minutes. I got five minutes. Well, see, I can't, Donnie. I'm, I'm gonna get you. Okay, so and since I only have five minutes, I just, I just want to say that um, Hose Heights is a historic community founded um, by a formerly enslaved gentleman by the name of Charles uh, Grandison Hose, H-O-E-S. Okay, now, hear me out. We have no advocacy in Black Baltimore to counter any type of false narrative about the significance of a building of a tour or of saving a historic community from being usurped by another part of a community that doesn't look like us. There are no resources provided. You can't go to the church. You can't go to a museum. You can't go to a historical society. So what we do is after the fact, when the water has already been broken from the dam, we want to complain and it's too late. Hose Heights, has a resplendent documented heritage. And in this rare 1995 reunion and celebration booklet that we have, I pulled it from our archives for you, you see a picture of the Roland Park water tower. It also goes into great detail about who the formerly enslaved people were and all this great information. But at the end of the day, right now, who cares? How is preserving a black community relevant? How does it help uh, the business developers? How does it create tourism? How does it improve the economy? What does it do for the, 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 the structure still there? So as a people, we need oh, to figure- Oh, Ramos told them black people, they are irrelevant and do not matter. Well, but 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 we tell ourselves that every day too, Donnie. So if, if, if we don't- damn, She ain't coming in telling me I don't matter. Tell her go back where she come from. If we don't love ourselves, I love myself. myself. I love myself. And if we don't take ownership, and it goes back to my company, no history, no self. If we don't do this, how in the world can we consistently demand and expect other entities to treat us the right way? I'll be damned if I'm going to keep telling you that's our community. That's our community. We showed you. Now back up. Okay. As I leave you, since I'm running out of time. This is a no, no, Phil. You can stay as long as you want. I'll, I'll no, put it back no, on you. No, 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 I, I can't. This, this is a one oh, of man, a kind. Man, you rushing me? <laughs> I'm done. This is a one of a kind autograph book from the Colored High School. Okay. I Why do I feel a certain kind of way when you say colored? Well, because because you're confused. You're confused, okay? And I'm saying that because I sent you, I had Veronica send you, and I'm, I'm going to tie this all together for you. I had her send you a 1906 Colored High School and Training Yearbook. Did I not? She emailed it to you this morning. It, the cover says Umpty Six. I saw the cover. That's all I saw. Okay, well. It, hold up, hold up, hold up. Tell them what Umpty is. Umpty is the, the name of the yearbook. You, you know how yearbooks, where did you come out of high school from, sir? Dunbar? Paul Lawrence Dunbar, yeah. So you were poet. So the yearbook may be called The Poets, okay? Or, or I don't know, Golden Umpty. Memories. I don't know what it's called, but anyway. It's called The Umpty. Okay, this Umpty Six is from 1906, published by the Colored High and Training School. Now, where at, was that? At Pennsylvania and Dolphin. It's been demolished. It's been demolished. But what I, what I'm trying to say to you is that I, I was segueing this colored 1906 to this 1916, 17, 18 autograph book that has Herbert Frisbee in it because you talked about Herbert Frisbee. He got Matthew Henson credit. Well, but Herbert Frisbee needs credit himself. 
Okay. Dr. Frisbee. Dr. Frisbee's one of his houses is still right there on Druid Hill Avenue with no marker, with no anything. You drive by it every, pardon my friends, every damn day and don't know and don't care. Okay. Now, so, hit me you know, up. Let's, let's put a plug in for George Gilliam and his wife, Stephanie, because that's one thing they did do is put some markers on Pennsylvania Avenue. Right, but I'm talking about more than Pennsylvania Avenue, Donnie. Pennsylvania Avenue I is totally amazing. get it. It was a start. It's the first that I've seen in my lifetime of Black people taking charge of our history. Yes, we need more. I wanted right. to ask you, don't we have a Maryland State Black history, something or other, through the governor's office? They all connected with the Banneker something museum down in Annapolis. How yes. come Black I people in Baltimore... How come our that. stuff isn't being documented? I mean, Donnie, you know, they got their stuff down there in Annapolis. What about us? Donnie. See, they put me on that board, and no disrespect, but I'm interested in lifting up my city, not your city. Donnie, time out. Hold up. The Maryland Commission for my African city first, then I get to your city. The Maryland Commission for African American History and Culture focuses on all the counties in the state of Maryland. What about Baltimore City? Who focuses on Baltimore City? Well, that that that's a whole nother conversation. OK, and hear me out. Years ago, I had a chance to be on the commission and I declined. I said, thank you, but no, thank you. Now, hear, hear me out again. All I saw was them trying to work me to death. And I'm like, hold up, pimp. <laughs> <laughs> OK, but well, hold up. Hold, one. Hold, hold up a minute. We need the capacity to tell the accurate story through our lens. And capacity means non-mess in meetings, Robert Rules of Order, documentation, uh, proper uh, financial reports turned in on time when it's necessary so we can be a legitimate, not me, a legitimate entity that can take their findings and get grants and get proper corporate sponsorship and municipal buy-in to do what we need to have done. This is what I don't understand. When we have a black me. mayor, we got black governors, we get black this, black that. What does any of it mean if, it, if, if a portion of it is not put on preserving our history? With all due respect to the Jewish Holocaust, where is the African Holocaust Museum statue? Where is Baltimore's Harriet Tubman statue? Well, that that's a deeper conversation that we can't hey. have in this one. But you're right. But you. But, but hear, me out. He, 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 hear me out. Hear me out. We don't have the capacity right now to get that done in Baltimore. We play the lottery every damn day. We built two stadiums. We spent sixteen billion dollars on a lottery. Correct. Don't Correct. tell me what we can't do. No, I, I'm not telling you what we can't Arnold do. Arnold Malley locked up every black man in Baltimore. Don't tell me what they can't do when they put their mind to it. It's all about priorities. It's all about putting... Our the priorities world. are on sports and not on education. Okay, but guess what? Even the sports priority is not accurate because it's not telling the stories of the people that came before the present day iconic athletic superheroes that held it down, that battled Jim Crow, that that integrated, that did all these things, okay? And and I'm, I'm going to leave you with this. How much time do I have? You can't talk I, about those black sports icons and not say no names. Okay, no, but I'm, I'm, getting, re I'm getting ready to hit you with something that I, I want you to, to, to feel me on, okay? The father of Baltimore black basketball house doesn't have a marker on it. Did you hear what I said? Okay, so who is the father of Baltimore black basketball? I'm going to give you one clue. The last name is Webb. W-E-B-B. -B. So I need to ask all of the black basketball players who claim they know Baltimore history who Mr. Webb was. It was a mister? Yeah, it's a mister. I've been documenting him for years. Uh, been following his career from the colored so high not, school. Hmm? You're not giving up the first name? No, I'm not. 
Will you come back and share the name? When when I uh, can you come back on the show? Um, I, yeah, I, I like coming on your show because we have good we have good repartee. We we have good jab, good good conversations. Um, so but but hear me hear me out for a minute. My no, it's it, it, it's not Chick Webb and not related to Chick Webb, but but thanks anyway. It's, uh, Deborah, uh, this this is a quality woman right here that just sent a comment in. She does she and her family do good work. Um, so but the point I'm trying to make is overall we're too busy ignoring the foundations of our ancestors that held it down to allow us to do what we do. So we're not properly grounded in our historic history. Then you go adding to our feelings of uh, inadequacy. Um, it's not a question of adding to our feelings of inadequacy. And if it is, okay, so be it, because something needs to wake us up. Something needs to jog our, our memory or get us fired up to say enough is enough. I love Harlem. I was quoted years ago in the city paper in 2005 talking about, I don't want to hear about the Harlem Renaissance. Baltimore had a Renaissance. Why are we going to continue to uplift all those folks when we don't know what's in our own backyard? Okay. You hear what I said, Donnie? And, and guess what? They got That's your answer. Darrell no. Webb. No, 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 no. Ooh. Anyway. Hey, hey, family, y'all going to let this cat slide? Hold up. Donnie, Donnie, We, Donnie, we have Donnie. one more shot. This is, folks, Donnie. this is overtime. Donnie. We are fortunate to have Donnie. Donnie. Philip Donnie. J. Merrill, Nanny Jack. Donnie. And company, LLC. Well, I was going to say the name of the website is nannyjack.com. Philip Merrill. Philip, how is, how is your mom doing? My mom is blessed. She's great. Miss Betty. Pioneering Western right. Dove. Pioneering Western Dove. Okay. Yeah, the CIAA watch. From the 100th anniversary, 1912 to 2012. Okay. Now, not today. Maybe next year. I'm going to drop on you, maybe, some pioneering history. That Baltimore. Hey look, hey, look, you can't leave my people hanging there. People around the world want to know who this Baltimore Black, Baltimore basketball, the father of Baltimore Black basketball. Brother man, when we come back on another show, we can focus just on Negro sports. How about that? Hey, we just ask you one damn question. See how black people be doing? <laughs> okay, and you know what? Keep on it. I won't even come back on your show. Let, let me hit you. Let me hit you. This, let me hit you with something else. Okay, seriously. Baltimore's history is enough to keep all of us busy for 10 lifetimes. We are wasting precious time fighting with each other over crumbs instead of figuring out a strategic plan to capture the history and then figure out how we disseminate it and distribute it where it benefits our community and our people. You have spooks at the door, and I, yes, I said spooks at the door, that do more to sabotage progress in Black Baltimore than to push it to the proper place that it belongs. Can you identify these spooks? Because we, we have a very special place in the Baltimore Harbor for the spooks. I, I'm, I'm, I, I don't like to, to put names. Uh, uh, we have the documentation of the names, but I, I will not. Is? Put it out I'm there. Sorry. No, no, that's not what we do at Nanny Jack. Put the out there because they're the very ones that want to come on TV during the political season. Correct. And talk about they want to endorse this person, that person. Come to find out they were FBI snitches during the 60s. Correct. Correct. Or we'll, we'll go to churches campaigning uh, like they're going to do All right, we got it. There you go. No. His Get name is. No, no, right. no. I'll give you another clue. He's an early Kappa. Fraternity member. A Kappa that can play basketball. And he can play football. And he was a World War I soldier. And he was in the school system. And he was at Morgan. Okay? So he's a bear. He's a Douglas Duck and he's a bear. Okay? That's it. What can I leave you with, Donnie? What the man's name, Jack? <laughs> what can I leave you with? <laughs> Can I, can, I, can I leave you with something else? No, man. No. 
How you gonna not tell me? I cut cuz that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. Um on, on a serious note, and I, and I I mean this in all sincerity. You start off talking about Django and the doll. Man, I just ran across a picture of Mahalia Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What what, what about Mahalia? We we got her some of her stuff. We got her 78 records. We have her photographs. Um well, what do you want to know about Mahalia? But anyway, but check this out. The the upper room. I'm looking for this basketball player, man. It's not well documented. And it is not well documented. You and, what what when when can we get the name of uh, when we they, do they, something? They are guessing. They just throwing up. Is yeah, it Jamal? Is it Pookie? No, it's not Pookie. And it's not Pee Wee and it's not Peanut. And, and it's, it's not, not and, and it's and not it's man. Not and it's not Edwin, and it's not Stink Man. It's not any of, of those names. But I want to, I want to circle back to something. Okay, you talked about Quentin Tarantino and Django and, and having a, a doll, which was part of the rollout program. I'm a, I'm a charter member of a rare Baltimore doll club called the Charm City Dollings Club. Okay, I was the first and only male member to be a charter member of this doll club many years ago. They still do great work today. I went out years ago and began to find dolls that were made by black companies, made by black companies. OK, the black company is called Shandana Operation Bootstraps. In the 60s and early 70s, they made dolls and employed people in a community that looked like us. Here is an example from the early 70s of a black owned doll. OK. Notice the fro. OK. Here is another one. Notice, okay. See, so when you're trying to counter the narrative of Mattel and in uh, white whiteness and identity, it's so important to have dolls that look like the people that would also play with them. I'm also trying to pull one off the shelf here. This is another one for you, Donnie. So they made the Red Fox, the Red Fox doll from Sanford and Son. They made uh, Dynamite, uh, Jimmy Walker from Good Time. They did uh, Flip Wilson and Geraldine, um, who I couldn't believe JJ is doing life insurance commercial. That means we get right. old, right? We we are we are getting old. But but this black company, Shandana Bootstraps from the West Coast, made uh, they even did an OJ Simpson doll that we have in the archive. So the point I'm making is that having dolls as part of a product development rollout is is not new. It's just okay. you know oh, okay. So I do did, did know that DC. But you didn't say DC. I'm not talking about. I I I, I know Edwin Henderson's grandson, who I did a project with, and who is tied into Tuskegee and the founder of basketball and is in the NBA but Hall of Fame. You didn't say DC. You said Baltimore. And that's what I'm talking about. So tell Janet, tell Jay Allen to take that stuff down. We're talking about Baltimore, are we not? Is that not what you love? Yes, yes. I'm just okay. Well, where do we find it? We find it when we come back on the show and talk about sports. I'm gonna put. I'm gonna. I'm look. Alexa, getting all in the middle of our argument. Listen, I'm gonna put your phone number on the internet if you don't tell us the answer. And guess what? And guess what? You do that, and I got something for you too. Okay. <laughs> okay. I got something for you too. Okay. No, I said the father of black basketball in Baltimore. Don't try to put words in my mouth. This is Jay Allen is that Janet Allen? I think it's Janet Allen. You did okay. say the father of black basketball in Baltimore. Yes, right. you did. But she's we trying know to say about DCs. He's we trying know. to say that I didn't. But and hear me out. Hey, hear me out. My mother, my mother taught Janet Allen at school sixteen in East Baltimore. Well, she cracking slick on you right now. I know, but I'm a crack. I'm a clap. I'm a clap back on her. Uh, okay. When are you coming back on the show? I don't know, bro, man. I got a lot going on, bro. I got I got some big things in the works that I can't, I can't talk about at the moment. But when they drop, I would love to come and drop them with uh with you. Uh some some worldwide, some worldwide activity that Nanny Jack and Company is, is doing. I think you before you go, you have to tell them who two shot lower chore was. And no, that's that's your category, bro. That you that's your cat. That he's your man. He's not my man. He's your freedom man. fighter. Led the most successful slave insurrection in the Western Hemisphere. Kicked Napoleon's iron parts. He mopped that ass up and down the street. He got a lamel ass whipping. Die, 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 die. I see. You know what? I don't know if I can come back on your show, bro. Because you 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 just raw. You just straight up raw. I, I'm, I'm That's trying. why they making Haiti pay for it today. 
They making payday pay uh, restitution still today because they beat his ego into the harbor. Donnie, I'm 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 gonna leave you and I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out quietly. They beat gonna, him I'm, so bad his wig came off. I'm gonna drop the mic with this, okay? How you like that? A black power statue from the early '70s where the kids could color it themselves. Here it is. See, our history is so expansive and so deep that we, we've been duped, Donnie. We've been duped. What's it we, made out of? P wax? Um, plastic. So you could paint it. Oh, you paint it. Yeah. 1970. We 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 have we have only been given the history that the white society has chosen to give for us. So I spent my career we only with the leaders that white society say can lead us. Right. So I spent my career. And that's why we tend to call them. What is the proper name to call a sellout? I, you know what? I, I don't want to go there. That's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> well, we know it's not Uncle Tom. Uncle Tom is actually a term is, is actually an honor. Uncle exactly. Tom was but but a, the black community, fighter. the black community misrepresents the terminology of Uncle Tom. Um, but uh, it was a so, trick done by white America. Okay, but again, what I'm trying to say to you is that you we, your store. What's, what's that half a name that stole his story? Is yeah, that a name? Yeah, that's you got that right. But here's, here's the thing. Stole stuff. But Don, here's the thing. And they make her all famous and stuff. She's a liar and a thief. She but, don't love Jesus and she go around smelling boys' bicycle seats. Donnie, Donnie. I'm done. I'm done. I can't say anything. All I can say is <laughs> it's, it's, it's always a pleasure. Um I don't know when I'm coming back, but uh, I just want to say that. Uh, don't pay him no mind. He, 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 that's his way of saying that this has been a dynamic show. But we know <laughs> that. And and big ups to, come on, come on. You go ahead. And I'll, I'll cut. You go ahead and say what you got to say. Get your commercial in. I, I don't have a commercial. I don't have a commercial. I just want to leave with this. We're dropping a new book in the spring called Baltimore and the Civil Rights Movement published by Arcadia out of South Carolina. It will illuminate, illustrate, and bring to light stories that I want as the author to come out about Black Baltimore and various aspects of the civil rights movement. So people, places, and situations that you may or may not be aware of will be featured in this book. A moment of silence for our ancestors on whose shoulders we stand. Ashe. Ashe. Nannyjack.com. We appreciate you. Peace. I'm out. I'm out. <laughs> Thank you. Great job.